Hi, I'm Fred Yakel, and I'm doing a series of videos with people who actually were involved with the Bill Thomas Cheetahs in 1964, people that raced with them, people that worked on them. And with me today is Jerry Enton. Uh, he bought the Cheetah that had been raced by Jerry Titus. So maybe, Jerry, you could tell us a little bit about what happened in your background, both before and after. Okay, well, to start with, the first car I had in road racing was called O. Yeller which was built by a fellow named Max Belchowski. A friend of mine named Jerry Titus was driving the factory race car, uh, which was built by a fellow named Bill Thomas, with help from another fellow named Don Edmonds. And I thought it was a more advanced car and would be better than O. Yeller. So I purchased it. It was owned by a fellow who owned a Chevy dealership in a place called Rialto, which is in California, and his name was John Groh. And I took the car and I mostly raced it in what you would call club racing or amateur racing. Uh, we would go to places like Santa Barbara or, or Pomona or Riverside also allowed club racing. And club racing is where you'd start to learn how to race and uh, no money or anything, just get experience racing. Our biggest club race was at a place called Santa Barbara. And that was a college town in an area called Goleta, which was the Santa Barbara Airport. And it's hard to believe, but they would get approximately 30,000 people out to watch that race, and it was a very fun event. And uh, I also brought the car to the first race they ever had at a racetrack in Las Vegas that was sponsored by the Stardust uh, Gambling Casino, and they called that the Stardust Raceway. And the car won the first race held at the Stardust Raceway. Uh, do you have any questions you'd like to ask me, Fred? Well, and then you also ran uh, at the Times Grand Prix and in the, uh, that series, right, the U.S. RRC series on the West Coast? Yes, I did. That was more professional type racing. And the USSRC was mostly made up of Americans racing each other. And usually there were two classes. One was called under two liters and the other was called over two liters. So uh, two liter engines were cars like Lotus 23s or Lotus Alans, different uh, smaller Porsches. cars, Porsches. They didn't have to, they weren't really in the class we were in, and they were racing for their own uh, trophies. Uh, this car was just when the rear engine evolution had come in. Uh, there were cars called Cooper Monacos or Brabham BT8s or Chaparrales, and later McLarens, and those cars seemed superior in handling uh, to these cars. This car was very fast in a straight line and a fun car to drive. You had uh, not a real pleasant experience at Riverside at the Times Grand Prix. Uh, that's true. Uh, the car was making a clunky noise in the last club race I was in, and I took the car to Bill Thomas to where they built the Cheetahs, and I asked them, did they see anything wrong with this car? It's going clunk, clunk. And they checked the car out supposedly, and they said they didn't. But what it was, was on the suspension link to the right rear, uh, a heim joint, I guess, was about to break. And in the race, that breaks. On a normal race car, they have a link that, uh, if you broke a component point, it would still hold the wheel up straight. On the Cheetahs, they didn't put that link in, and the wheel went under the car, and I slid out in the dirt. But I had also moved over, was going very slow, and the fellow I moved over for was the world driving champion at the time named uh, Jimmy Clark. So he thought after the race he had cut me off and came over to apologize. I said, no, I just pulled over. Uh, part of the car had broke, and that was it. Well, now, didn't you also run at Laguna Seca shortly after that with the uh, at the Examiner Grand Prix part of the USRC? Or did you just not actually get the car repaired I, in time? Uh, I think that was before. I think Monterey oh. was before Riverside. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, sure. I had run there. Then uh, after I fixed the car, which the body could have been patched up, but I just put on a lightweight body. It was easier, and they didn't cost that much at the time. The whole body configuration cost, I believe, like $300. So to repair it, I don't know what it would have cost, and it would have been, as they say, like Mickey Mouse, like trying to repair it. And uh, a friend of mine was uh, a second unit director on a movie called Spin Out. And he asked me, did I want to put my Cheetah? And I also had a McLaren, which I had bought after uh, this car was damaged at the Riverside race. And I had them both in uh, that movie, Spin Out.
In spin out, my car was painted orange. Okay, then after that, you sold it to. Uh, I sold it to one of the mamas and the papas named Denny Doherty, and he converted it for street use. And uh, well, that that had to be kind of interesting because I believe you told me that there weren't any VIN numbers on the car or ID numbers. It was just a car sold as a cheetah. Well, this would have been in uh, like 1965, and I believe at that time you could have gone to your Secretary of State or Department of Motor Vehicles and tell them you had a home-built car, and they would issue you a VIN. Just as now, if you bought uh, a four, uh, four-wheel four machine where you sit side by side, like a Polaris Range or something, some states allow you to have a new VIN for it and claim that it's a street legal machine as long as you have turn signals and the right tires and everything. In those days, I think they were more interested in that you had mufflers on it and they didn't care if it had racing tires on or they didn't care if it had windshield wipers or anything like that. So at that point in time after you sold it, it became a street car and uh, went through a series of owners in Southern California. Uh, a fella whose family owned uh, hamburger type restaurants called Tiny Nailers, he bought it off of Denny Doherty after me and uh, then it was sold and it eventually my car ended up with a fellow named Albert Way in New Jersey and he's passed away and now his brother Ron Way uh, has possession of the car but it is, hasn't been shown or run. For some reason, Albert Wade thought the car should have an aluminum body, which it initially had, and he commissioned a new aluminum body to be made for it. So, that uh, is kind of, in a nutshell, our, uh, Jerry's experience with the Cheetahs back at the time, and then you went on from there to run a whole different series of cars in the Can-Am series, which was what happened after the USRC, is that uh, not correct? Right. The USRC was more amateurs racing for uh, prize money, which wasn't very big, and uh, a place like a proving grounds to work your way up. And the Can-Am series was way more professional. It had Indy drivers, Formula One drivers, uh, world champion, world champion drivers, drivers, yeah. And the fact Ferrari factory would send cars over and all that. Yes. So anyway, we're just trying to set a... a background for what these cars were back in the day. So thank you very much. Sounds good.